So you're ready to deploy a new service, but you need to seed it with data from other services. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, and I'll cover various solutions to this common problem that I get asked quite a bit. Stick around to the end, because I'm also going to challenge that I really don't think this should be a common problem, and I'd like to hear, if you've experienced it, why that is. I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. Typically, when people are working in a decomposed system with many different services, and they're using an event-driven architecture, they're really distributing data oftentimes using something like event-carried state transfer. So let's say we have two different services, and what typically will happen is when there's some type of change to some data entity within service B, it will then publish some event, some topic that service A knows about that it can then consume. And then it has all the data within inside that event about whatever changed with service B so that it can essentially update its own database and keep a local cache. Now, the challenge with this is that you're only going to be able to consume these events once you deploy it and get all the changes moving forward. If you're creating and deploying a brand new service, you don't have any historical data and that can become a challenge if the events you're consuming are really just Delta changes. So sure, yeah, you get a Delta change, but you have no idea about what that entity is in the first place. So how do you seed your data and get all this historical data from other services? Here's some solutions. I'd say one of those popular solutions is using an event log in something like Kafka, where you have your services from the very beginning publishing events to their respective topics. That way, when you stand up a new service that you need to seed, it can reach out to the various topics and start at the very beginning of that topic and start consuming up to now in real time. So that way you can get all the data, all the historical, process every event in that topic, in that event log from the very beginning. You do need to be thinking about this very early on that you're gonna be using something like Kafka as a means to distribute data, that you're gonna have these topics with no deletion policy so that if you do stand up a new service, you can just consume at, from index zero all the way to now but that does require some foresight that this is how you're gonna do it. Now, another trend I've been noticing is really event carried state transfer kind of turning into CDC change data capture. And what this has been looking like is, let's say we have a service, internally it's using MySQL, and then there's tools, CDC tools, like DBZM as the example, where it's gonna get those changes, and then it's one gonna be publishing those to a Kafka topic, and then that way you can have your other services, service A, B, C, or any new service, then do the exact same thing as I was mentioning before and just consume those topics. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with using change data capture or event carry state transfer. However, it does have some pitfalls and things that you need to be aware of. I will have a link to another video that I've done about CDC that you can watch to get an overall idea about some of those pitfalls and where I find it useful. But just to cover it briefly here, is when we're thinking about change data capture, event carried state transfer, it's really important to understand what data that you're exposing. So just as we have two different services here, we realize that each service has its own database. It's its own implementation detail. We've gone past the point of realizing, hey, we're not gonna have service A reach out directly to service B's database. We don't wanna couple, we don't wanna integrate at the database level. That's an internal implementation detail. If that's the case, you need to be really aware about the events that you're publishing and doing something like CDC, that if you're publishing events that look exactly like your schema, well, then you are going to be coupling directly to what your schema is, and it's going to be very difficult to change. This means that if you're using something like CDC that's converting these to events that has information about your schema and you're publishing those to other service boundaries, well, you are still coupled at your database there really is no difference than reaching out directly at the database, which we don't want to do. Rather, what you want to do is have some type of translation from these schema changes, delta changes, or whatever you're publishing from CDC, you want to define that as some external outside event that you can version differently, and that's what you want to be publishing. So whether that be to a broker, to something like a log, like Kafka, you want to define these outside events that you can version separately so you're not exposing your internal implementation details like your schema. So another solution to seeding a new service isn't really seeding it at all, it's really doing it lazily. Meaning that when I was talking about before event carried state transfer, maybe it's just a delta change that we're receiving. Let's say service A is something brand new. If we don't have that any idea about what that entity is or that delta change, then we just call back to the producer. 
So service B, we make some synchronous call to it. It provides some type of API for getting this historical or the full value data of that entity or whatever we're trying to get. And then we can reach out to our database and persist that. Then going forward, any delta change, any type of event carried state transfer that we have of that specific entity, we don't need to make a callback anymore because we already have it. We can just update partially what's in our own local database, our local cache. Now, given your context, that might not work at all. You actually need at the very beginning some seeded data for a bunch of historical data, maybe from the beginning of when the system was built, or just maybe it needs to be the last two weeks of current kind of data. In that particular situation, what you can do is just provide whatever service is the producer that it's gonna produce data. It can have maybe a periodic dump. This could be daily, weekly, depending on your needs, hourly, of all the historical data that you could be putting to some blob storage. That way, at that point, when you're starting to seed your service, you can at least pull that kind of as a snapshot, as kind of that seeding data. From there, once you start getting messages from the consumer, from the topic, you start listening to it, you know at a given point in time, you can start listening and get everything up to that point. Again, a lot of this depending on kind of whether the message broker that you're using or using a log like Kafka, a lot of this depends on the tooling and the infrastructure that you're using. But again, just having that producer, having that initial service dump some data that's available to other services to consume to use that as its C data as its starting point. Now you may not have a lot of data and you may just choose, okay, we're just gonna expose some API that any type of service can call to get historical data. But again, it's really context specific, whether you have a lot of data, how much historical data is gonna be returned, how much load and stress is that gonna be put on the service. Again, a lot of this is context specific. Now I mentioned at the very beginning of this video that it's kind of a common question a common problem that I get asked. And oftentimes I really wonder why is it a common problem? Because I don't think it should be. I think distributing data around into a decomposed system like this can be really difficult, especially if you want that data to be consistent and you need it to be consistent. It's not gonna be because everything's asynchronous, you're just pushing events around. So why do you need data in another service as a local cache? I do think there's valid places, use cases for this, especially around query and reporting purposes. Um, if you're kind of building some type of data warehouse for reporting purposes, et cetera. But if you need data from another service because you need to perform some type of business logic, some type of operation, then I'd really be curious of, is it okay that you have inconsistent data there? There's a lot of issues with distributing this data around that can cause a lot of headaches. So ask yourself the question is, do I really need this data? Because if you think about your local cache, it's exactly that, it's a cache. You have immutable data, you know it's stale, it's not consistent with the operations you're trying to perform, if that's what you're trying to do, and they're gonna be versioned. Another thing to think about here is really the places I find it useful, like I was mentioning reporting, is that oftentimes it's helpful if, for, if it's reference data, and if it's from boundaries that are more in a supporting role. Again, we're talking about reference data, not transactional data. If you are using transactional data, comment below and kind of give me your use case or your scenario where you need to distribute this data around. And is it okay that it's stale and it's not gonna be consistent with the operations you're trying to perform? I'll have a link at the very end of this video to a video I've done talking about this, about where data belongs and if you need consistency, how you might wanna think about it and kind of change your mind about distributing data. So if you're deploying a new service and you need seed data, hopefully this video gave you some ideas, some solutions, and hopefully as well, it gave you a thought about maybe should we be distributing this data? If you have thoughts like this and have questions or your own opinions, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server where you can chat with other software developers. The link's in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.